So I'm guessing you saw the title of this video and thought, oh, what a funny meme. What a, what a big joke. What a just, mm, what a funny meme. And then you saw how long it was, and then you said, oh, I guess it's just a really long meme. No. No, this is the real video. I'm actually doing this. You thought this was a joke? I'm actually doing this. Uh, okay, so, I love Undertale, and somehow, to some people, this could be considered a bad thing, because we know with all the fandom hate, I'm not even, we're not even going to go into that, we're just going to, we're going to avoid that, we're going to, we're going to pretend like that doesn't exist for now. I'm sure you've already seen, like, a million videos where they analyze with, like, precise scientific details on how, like, it makes you feel emotions and, you know, whatever, so I'm just going to leave it at that. One of the coolest parts of the game. It's the Sans battle. Like, I don't think you could find a top 10 boss battle list today without finding Sans on it, because it's just, it's just the coolest thing. It's like this, Sans first off is a cool character. People, like, people can really relate to Sans. Sans is like, he's laid back, he's just super chill, making puns, being a cool person, drinking ketchup from the bottle. But then, when you kill all of his friends, he starts to say, okay, here, here's all the shit, and I'm putting the shit away. You're the shit now. Clap your ass. And to illustrate that, how surprising his boss battle is, because you know, like, his just chill personality totally contrasts from how powerful he is, you can find probably at least 10 YouTuber react to Sans battle things out there where they absolutely lose their minds because they don't expect Sans to be like, the most powerful boss in the game. The one that, I haven't beat him. I haven't beat him, I, I beat every other boss. I beat Undyne, Undyne killed me a few times, no other boss killed me except Undyne and Sans. And that's about it. So, no, not trying not to flex on you, but yeah, I beat Asgore first try, so... <laughs> so yeah, to sum up, because I understand I ramble in these introductions, Sans is a cool character. And with a cool character and a cool boss fight comes great music. Megalovania is an amazing song. It's amazing for a boss fight, like especially a one-on-one -on -one final battle. A sort of battle that determines things. There's this sort of amount of powerfulness in Megalovania that sort of makes you feel like this is the end battle. It's just, it, what's, it's what makes it the coolest song. Which is why I think it's pretty understandable that there are probably about a thousand remixes on YouTube. Maybe more. <laughs> There's, it's so many people. So many people have um, edited it made it into different styles. But now let's get into the part you actually probably clicked on this video for because I'm just rambling even more at this point. The Megalovanias. Why, why are you making a top 15 Megalovanias, Ryan? It's been done before. Many people have made their own uh, grouping of these songs and posted it online. Well, I'll give you a few reasons. They aren't very comprehensive. Like there's only like, I feel like 10 is the most people go to. And they don't give good reasons. They're just like, here it is, good song, bye. You may also be asking, if you if you finally feel sated on the question of why I'm making this video, you might be asking, what kind of makes you uh, qualified to make this video? Okay, bring it up. Bring it up, Ryan. Ryan who's editing this, bring bring it up. Oh, oh, what's that? Is that is that a Megalovania playlist? With let's just let's just check this. What is that? Thirty six songs, two hours. And 35 minutes? Whoops. Bet you feel stupid now. But that's okay, because if you watch this video, it'll make up for it. But still, just because I love, you know, Undertale and I love the Sans fight, doesn't mean that, of course, my opinions, my educated opinions are fact. If you disagree with anything here, good. I hope you're not like me. Because if there's anyone else in this earth like me, then I think the earth is doomed. The earth is already doomed enough. If there's anyone else like me, it's just, we're going to hell. Also, just a disclaimer, because I'm, I'm new to this YouTube stuff. I'm pretty sure, because these are reviews, this is under the fair use, fair use sort of thing. So I don't think any, like, anything bad's going to happen. I, of course, I'm going to credit everyone down in the description. I'm not stupid. And I'm going to make sure that I fucking plug that shit. So, this um, review is going to be divided into me saying the positives about a song, the negatives, and then its rating. Pretty simple. I hope you can understand it. So, it's probably only been like, uh, you know, 40 minutes for this intro. So, now it's, uh, let's get on to the actual 
review. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is my top 15 Megalovanias. Number 15, Megalovangarang by Psychosis91. This is a banger. I don't know if you know what a banger is. It's kind of like bopping. It's like, it's where you bang your head. This is a banger. <laughs> okay, so this song just has an amazing beat. It's um, Megala, uh, it's Bangarang by the uh, popular classical artist Skillerx, and it takes Megalovania and it just mashes them together and they fit so well. There are some uh, special edits too, like uh, different noises. I like it when, um, for mixes, I'm gonna explain this. Mixes can be a little bit unoriginal, but for this song, they use a little bit of um, some style to it that doesn't just make it. You can tell there's a difference between a song that's been just like slapped together over each other and some songs that you can actually like sort of tell has been strategically placed. Like the song changes beats and like there's like different sound effects, like there's the sand going into battle sound effect and there's all this different stuff that makes it a bit more professional in my opinion. But other than that, it's just a rip. Like, I don't, I'm gonna explain this now because I'm gonna be bringing it up for the next few ones, next few Megalovanias. Like a rip, like, if it's something that you could probably just make in Premiere, like it's not an original song, it's just a mashup of two songs, it loses points in my opinion. I'm not saying this song's bad, it's still an amazing song that somebody took effort to put together. But like, it takes probably, probably, I'm pretty sure it takes more effort to actually make an original song than to just like mix it. So even though this is an amazing song, it's gonna go uh, lower on the list. I would give this song a 7.2 based on my criteria of hype and uniqueness. Number 14, Just a Regular Crab Rave. Nothing to see here, folks, by Fluxy. So like I said, a lot of these at the beginning are gonna be just mixes, but let me tell you something. These songs wouldn't seem to fit together. It's Crab Rave by Monster Cat Noise Storm and Megalovania, right? And you'd be thinking, oh, okay, so it's the song about crabs dancing, this like tropical sort of steel drum song, and Sans Battle. What, why, why mix them? Yeah, it's a very energetic, exciting sort of, sort of song that once you listen to it, it works pretty well. I like how the creator makes the uh, notes uh, steel drums. I'm not sure how Fluxy did this, but it works very well and it actually makes it fit into the song. It shows that extra step to make the mix just a little bit more unique. Although, as I just said, a big part of this song is the meme factor. Like, this song would be higher up on the list if it was like an actual song, but again, it's just two songs mixed together, kind of, kind of just as a joke. Even though it ended up being an amazing song, it's still kind of just a joke. I would give this song a 7.4 out of 10. Number 13. When you're a romantic pianist, but also a gamer. Seth Eberman. So this is the first one on the list that isn't just a mashup, but it's, this is definitely a weird one. Let me explain it. It starts off with um, the Titanic song, uh, Near, Far, Wherever You Are, whatever that's called. And then it transitions into Megalovania with some hints of um, the Zelda theme song and the Mario, Super Mario theme song. So you might be asking yourself, what the, what? Excuse me? Um, if you don't know who Seth Everman is, our um, bald god, our eye-raising master, he does a lot of weird stuff with the piano. And to be honest, the song he made here, that was just kind of, again, kind of like a meme, just a joke. It's still pretty good. Like the, the transition from just like a classical romantic song into Sands, it's pretty like energetic. It makes you like, sadly this is further down on the list because it's not a full song. I can't even like use this for the full review explanation I'm doing because there's just so little of it. It's like less than a minute, I think. And if this was a full song, you bet your ass it would be probably number five, but it's just a little bit of a joke song, so I can't have it rated too high. But Seth, if, if you're watching this, which you never will, why not make it a full song? Because I know you really want it to be on number five. <laughs> this song was played like an epic sir, and I would rate it an eight out of 10. Number 12. Megalovania, Intense Symphonic Metal Cover by Falcone. This 
is an incredible cover of Megalovania. It's a, just a metal cover with like so many nice sounds to it. It fits the song so perfectly and it has such a high amount of energy to it. I, I really can't say that much more about it. It's, you'd have to listen to the song yourself, which you should. I first found it through NCH Productions' uh, Sans Font Battle, which is a really funny idea. And once you listen to it, it's just, it fits. It fits so well, and it's just, yeah, I, I can't say that much more about it. It's just amazing. Now, why is it low on the list? I'm, I'm going to have to say because it's just note for note Megalovania. Like, although it is a very good cover, nothing much has changed except how it's played, like how it sounds. Still, great cover. Highly recommend it. I would rate this one an 8 out of 10. Number 11, Undertale Friends by Damon Our Savior. Damon Our Savior is known to make a lot of mixes. Damon is a master of the mix, and it is no exception with Megalovania. This is a mix of um, Internet Friends by Knife Party and Megalovania. <laughs> One big plus about this song, besides the fact that they fit well together, is that it's definitely not just a basic mix. There's a lot of editing done so that it fits well, and it's not just Megalovania. Although you can totally tell that this song mostly is for Megalovania by the cover and how most of the mix is Megalovania, or else it wouldn't be on this list, there are some mixes of um, his theme, Ghost Fight, and um, other Undertale songs, and these songs just make it fit more, because there are some parts in Internet Friends where Megalovania just wouldn't fit. So it kind of like almost tides over the song to the part where Megalovania's gonna come back. And then when it comes back, it comes back kicking and fighting, and it's just, whew. I'm sure I'm gonna sound like a broken record at this point, but again, this is not further up on the list because it is just a basic mix. Although I do love the creative twists done to it, it is still not an original song. And so that's why it is but is this, where are we even on? Number 11. That's why it's number 11. I would rate this song an 8.1 out of 10. Number 10. Patska Megalovania. Lanch and Kyria. Oh boy, I should look up how to pronounce that. Okay, so I couldn't figure out how to pronounce it. If I butchered it, I am sorry, but I'm about to make up for it by praising the amazing songs. These guys make a lot of acoustic and different sort of covers and they are all very, very good. Some jazzy, some, they do a lot of different things. And just honestly, they're all amazing. I would suggest you check out their YouTube channel. But at the moment, of course, we are focusing on the topic Megalovania. They came out with an album full of, uh, it's called uh, Podskazka. Again, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, but it's kind of like Russian folk music. I can't say I'm an expert in, um, musical genres like that. I think that's what it is. And either way, Megalovania was a song in it because they do a lot of Undertale covers and it sounded phenomenal. It's got an acoustic mix. It's got like vocals in the background. It's presented in such a unique and powerful way and I just love it. The only bad part is just like the other song, it's just kind of note for note Megalovania. There are some notable differences, but not enough that I would say it's super different than the original song. Still, very nice presentation of it, and I love the uh, instrument changes, and I love the vocals. But I am confident in saying that this song deserves all the praise it can get, and which is why I've rated it 8.1. Number 9. Megalotrossel by Shara X. Shara X, or Shirax, I'm pretty sure it's Shara X. Could be Shirax. I've had a little bit of trouble pronouncing today, haven't I? They have made so many Undertale covers, it would be hard not to have them on this list. And so I decided to take one of their best Megalovanias that I think they've done, which is Megalotrossel. Um, they, there have been a few Megalovania Bontrossel mashups over time. This one, I think, is probably the one that takes the cake for me. It's got... It mixes together the best. It uses both Sans and Papyrus' motifs excellently. The instruments and sort of sounds used blend together well, so it's not just like the hard, sort of harsh notes of Megalovania mixed with the sort of almost funny comical notes of Von Trossel. It blends together much more easily. And it's just an exciting song that kind of, it's very powerful. It's like um, electronic slash dubstep. Again, I'm not an expert in music genres, but it is pretty dang good to bop your head to. 
My downside for this song, although it is a plus for some people, it can get a little bit too electronic for me. Like it can get very chaotic with how many sounds are in it at the same time. But other than that, it's an amazing song, which is why I would rate this song an 8.4 out of 10. Number eight, Waters of Megalovania, Vontanic Sage. So, um, if you're not an Undertale fan, you're probably not watching this. But if you are an Undertale fan, maybe you've seen Ultra Sands, a fan-made boss fight where Sands, I forget how, but he, tort he sort of just turns into God. <laughs> and it's, I think there's a reason that Waters of Megalovania was chosen for the cold, looming, devastating presence of Ultra Sands. It's because the song fits those three characteristics very, very well. This song is a mix of Waters of Nazareth and Megalovania, and it sort of mixes the scary, powerful style of uh, Waters of Nazareth with the fighting, exciting uh, tone, I guess you could say, of Megalovania. And it does this in a way where it combines to show a character who is, has become godlike and unstoppable and is coming right for you and you've just wet your pants because you're dead. Of course, once again, I'm gonna have to say this over and over again, this is still just a mix. It is super original, which is why it's higher than the other mixes and it has a lot more, more things done to it. And another bad thing to note about it, which is a plus for some people again, but it's slower, which I know is supposed to go with Waters of Nazareth so to make that certain sound. I would rate this song an 8.4 out of 10. Number seven, Megalovania by Sim Gratina. This is a cool version of Megalovania. It's, um, there have been a lot of jazz remixes of Megalovania, which I like them. I, I wouldn't say they fit the style very well. Even though Megalovania is technically written in like a jazz scale, I still don't like them very much, but that's just my personal preference. But this song, it's not just jazzy, it's jazzy, it's jazzish. It also keeps that exciting electro feel that I like and makes it more, more packing a punch. It makes it more like Megalovania to me. It's just a song that I think takes a different look at Megalovania and makes it a little bit different, which um, I like in some ways. Like, um, if you were to make an AU where Sans is like some sort of freestyle hip hop artist, I think this would be the song to go with for his fight, so. <laughs> Why would you make an AU like that? The only thing that I could say about this song is that it does get a little bit repetitive. Like it starts to just kind of repeat a little bit. But still, good song, which is why I am rating this song an 8.5 out of 10. Number six, Nihilist by Ace Waters, Rich Abe, and Thunder Scott. This song comes from an entire album of metal Undertale covers by uh, Ace Waters. And so you might be wondering, well, why is this metal Megalovania higher than the other one? Higher than the one by Falcone, which is very good and like a lot, I would say even more exciting than this one. Well, I think that has to do with originality. I feel like the Megalovania presented by Ace Waters and the crew here is does a lot more justice to first off sticking to the song, but also going in new directions with it. It's hard, I think, for an artist. I'm not a musical artist, so I guess I can't really say anything for sure, but I think it's hard for a musical artist to um, stick to the same feel of a song while also making it different. But I think Nihilus does it very well. And you can tell right away from the title that it's gonna take an original spin, because it's not just called Megalovania, it's called Nihilus, which some argue is Sans's sort of uh, psychological as for the song itself, it has very high energy and the twists just kind of leave you trying to follow the song every which way, which I like in the song. The only reason this song isn't further up on the list is because one, the song it's after it I liked better, and two, I'm just not a big fan of metal. I know that's kind of a dumb reason, but um, this is my list and if you uh, think that my list is stupid, then I agree with you. That's why I would rate this song an 8.6 out of 10. Number five. Megalovania Chime Mix by Game Chops. Game Chops, as you probably know if you're a fan of remixes, does a lot of remixes and a lot of different songs. And um, they've done a few Megalovanias. I think this is their best one. This song, this song gets right into the action. There's no buildup. It goes powerful straight away. It starts getting into this electro, I guess that's why they call it Chime. I'm not, I'm not familiar with what Chime music is, but it's like just heavy, intense dubstep. And 
This song I think is great in the fact that, well, like, I've been talking this entire video about how originality matters to me. This song probably takes that to a whole new level. It definitely goes away from the Megalovania song doing some original things with a high amount of energy, which is also important to me. But um, I'm gonna start sounding like a hypocrite here when I say maybe too much originality, maybe a little bit too much. This song goes in so many crazy directions that it goes, it gets a little bit too far for Megalovania. It starts to become like, what is this song? You know what I'm saying? Like, I like it, but also, come on, rein it in, guys. Bring that rope in. Let's not go all over the place. It does go back to Megalovania and the motif, but still, it, I, I just think it goes a little bit all over the place. Like I am right now. <laughs> Another thing is that the chime aspect, I guess, of it, I'm still not familiar with the term, but the, the electro aspect of it can get annoying at times. That is why I would rate this song an 8.6 out of 10. Number four. Your soulmate, Hanzaki. So Hanzaki is a composer, I believe, who made an entire, like one, no, 30 minute video of just an Undertale anniversary mix, which I appreciated a lot. But um, so if you, I would recommend checking out the entire video. It's amazing. I think this song is so far up in the list because it uses Sans's motif and visualization. I know we're talking about just songs here, but the visualization they give with it, just, it goes so well with Sans' fight. It really, to me, highlights the core of Sans' fight being a desperate attempt to save his friends, even though he kind of knows it's all over. It's fast with a lot of energy, and it highlights sort of the fight that you have with Sans. I don't think there's anything else I could say about that. The only bad part about this song is that it's short. There needs to be more. I mean, I understand because it is part of a uh, video with a, a lot of songs, so it can't just take up the whole thing. But I think if it was its own song, it would just be, mm, it would be perfect. That is why I'm writing this song an 8.6 out of 10. Number three, Karma by The Great, oh God, I'm gonna say this wrong, The Great Anazi. So I'm not sure if you could tell, but I'm a big nerd for Undertale. And I read this webcomic once called um, The Thought by, uh, I believe, I can't, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong too, I've just been pronouncing everything wrong, but it's by uh, Transter, Traster. Um, it's just a really cool story. It's a really um, neat way to imagine what could happen with different paths, things like that. The Great Anazi made a song inspired by this webcomic and I think it fits just so well. In this webcomic, if you, if you haven't seen Undertale, I don't know why you're watching this, but you're gonna be confused. Sans kills Frisk just right off the bat and just takes all the seven souls because he's just like, fuck this shit. And um, <laughs> he becomes Sans Seraphim, which is this sort of ultra Sans Omega beast. So in an interesting way, this song uses all the motifs from characters and kind of mixes it with Megalovania because these souls, which are connected to characters like Undyne, like the green ones connected to Undyne and like, you know, the orange ones, like yellow ones, Metaton, things like that, which is pretty darn cool. It's, um, it's not only that, it's high energy. I know I've said that phrase a lot, but I really like songs that just have an amazing amount of energy to it because it really reflects Megalovania's style. And um, it kind of brings you on a musical journey as the description of the video says, which is something I look for in the song. The one bad thing about it is that it switches around a lot. Like, the good part about it is that these all, there's all these motifs mixed together, but the bad part is that they're always changing, which can be a little bit distracting at times. It's cool at others, it's distracting at some times, and also it's a little bit, it's a little bit too long of a song. It's the opposite of what I think for some songs. Like, I think it should be a little bit shorter, but that's just me. And I still think it deserves third place on this list, which is why I would write this song an 8.7 out of 10. Oh, we're getting to the finalists here. Number two, A Bit of Undertale by Joe Jeremiah. This is another special one because it's part of another sort of collection of 8-bit um, music by Joe Jeremiah. Is he dead? He hasn't posted in a while. I don't like check social media, so I can't tell. Can somebody in the comments? Okay. Usually I say don't comment on my videos or I'll delete my channel. I will leave this exception once. Someone comment and tell me where the hell Joe Jeremiah is so I don't get so worried. Anyway, he made a whole Undertale 8-bit tribute, which was amazing. 
but the Megalovania part was by far the best. It goes from like great uh, remix of uh, Save the World and it just transitions right into Megalovania. It starts with just a powerful hit and it just keeps going. It stays strong the whole way through. It uses sort of like, I wouldn't say improvised because I think Joe thinks it like uh, writes it out first, but he definitely, it sounds improvised. It sounds like an amazing sort of just, um, it sounds like an amazing flow that just keeps strong the entire way through the song and it keeps, it keeps growing almost. It's just, I can't describe it well. You need to listen to the song yourself. I've linked it in the description. I hope you realize, so please go check it out. It's really amazing. Now, the only bad part about this um, is that I have nothing bad to say. And that makes me mad because I feel like I should have something bad to say. That's why this song gets a 9.3 out of 10. Here we go. Number one, I, I would add it. Here we go. I know you've been waiting for this. Number one, I would add it in a drum roll, but I really don't feel like it. So I'm just going to get straight into it. Number one, Reality Check Through the Skull by DM Dokuru. So the whole album, The Underground Radio by DM Dokuru, I swear to God, if I'm not pronouncing that right, I'm going to punch myself. The whole entire album is amazing. But again, the Megalovania is what we're focusing on. And the Megalovania here is a masterpiece. It starts off with a few clanging bells, kind of setting just the ominous tone. And it fits with Sans's fight. You meet him in a hallway where it kind of like, you can imagine there's a bell ringing and then it's like echoing throughout the hallway. And then it transitioned to a guitar solo where you can imagine Sans is kind of having his little monologue spiel. And then once that guitar solo is over, Megalovania hits you like a brick in the fucking head. It's got a quick beat, uses amazing sounds, um, uses different motifs, it even uses, um, it doesn't just use Megalovania, it uses the song that might fight when you fight, the song that might play when you fight Sans, which um, has some Bon Trossel motifs in it as well. And it's just, it, I think, number one, highly original. Number two, um, uses the motifs well. Number three, super high energy. Number four, I don't need to have a number four because this song is great. It's on Spotify, it's on wherever you can find it. Definitely check this song out. The only negative I could find is that it can get a little screechy sometimes. Like, I don't even know. It's, yeah, it's probably just me being nitpicky, but it can get a little bit screechy with the noise at some points. So that's it. That's why I would rate this song a 9.4 and declare it most likely the best in Megalovania. So, um, a few things for the outro. That song, Reality Check Through the Skull, number one, it's still only 9.4. So, there could still be songs out there better than that song. I'm not sure if there ever will be. Maybe not. Maybe it's already out there. But I hope we can all keep looking and keep creating. Because even though... <laughs> Even though the, the game is old, yes, I think Sans, the Sans fight still resonates with all of us. It's still something that we can relate to. It's, um, we're all kind of just having our final stand on the planet, just like Sans is. And although we would like to be chill and laid back and not care too much about anything, sometimes we gotta take a fight, and sometimes we're gonna lose. I feel like I tried to make this a little bit more emotional than I should have. So I just hope sometime in the future our society can come together to create a 10 out of 10 megalovania. If this happens, global warming will just cease and that'll be it. Like that'll just be the end of all problems to humanity. So I hope we can come together and do that. Um, I'd like to reiterate this again because I'm new to this whole thing. I'm pretty sure this is fair use. So I'm not trying, I'm not trying to, of course, these are amazing content creators, amazing artists, and I'm not trying to take anything from them. So I'm, I'm obviously, this is not getting monetized. That'd be stupid of me. Um, but I hope that you will go check them out and hopefully you've um, found a new favorite artist. Hopefully you found a new favorite Megalovania. Hopefully you found someone to listen to every now and then, because I think the whole reason I made this is because I want to expose people to new music. I mean, understandably... I've kind of just exposed them to one song over and over again, but if you check out these artists, they have other songs, and I just, I hope you'll go do that, because all of them deserve any views they get.
like always, do not comment, except for that one thing. You can comment about that one thing. If it's not about that one thing, do not comment, do not like, do not subscribe, or I'll have to delete it. I actually, um, on my recent few videos, I've seen people liking and commenting and subscribing, and you're all funny, oh, haha, you think I'm going to delete it? No, actually, I deleted your likes. Uh-huh. You thought I couldn't do that. Well, I did. So, yeah. It's time to, it's time to play ball. Your move, viewers. I've put my chess piece on the board. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> but seriously, if you did like this video, I hope you will go and make someone happy today. And I hope you will go listen to a few of the Megalovanias that I have listed here. There is one song I didn't mention. One song left in the catacombs of Megalovanias. One song that's been hidden. Buried away. Probably for a good reason. One song that will give you a bad tom.